Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to share with you how you can digitally add a window to the shot. And the practical reason for this, and this particular shot anyways, is I wanted the camera to go through a window, and so I just had the window of the car rolled down, no window there, and then I'm digitally re-adding the window later to make it look like it's going through the window. And this is part one here, we're going to be tracking in the window, and then in part two we'll be focusing more on lighting and rendering and compositing, all that good stuff. Real quick here at the beginning, what we're gonna need is some footage that doesn't have a window in it. In this particular case, I have some ridiculously shaky camera footage, which might be a little bit challenging to track the window into. If you can do challenging things, then it'll be a piece of cake when things are a little bit more simple. And the second thing we're gonna need here, oh man, that is a very loud bug, is a photosphere. And I just got this on a phone. It's pretty simple to take. And we're going to use this for reflections down the road. All right, so cracking open a fresh scene in Blender here, what I'm going to start by doing is going up to the corner here and going into the movie clip editor. And right here, I'm just going to load in some footage. And what I've got here is an image sequence of the part where the car is in the shot and it needs its window replaced. So I'm going to load those in. I've just selected all of them by hitting A, by the way. And now, in our movie clip editor here, if we play it through, we should see things are loading into the cache here, and that's the shot. So I'm going to go to the very last frame here, and then I'm going to hold control and then hit end with my mouse over the timeline. And now that'll just clip the end frame right to the end of our shot here. So now as we play through, everything seems to be playing back pretty nicely. All right, one thing I'm going to do before we get started tracking here is I'm going to go into the render properties here and down to color management and I'm just going to set it from filmic to standard. And now things are a little bit more vibrant and a little bit nicer to look at. Not super vital to tracking but it makes things a little bit more enjoyable. Okay so this footage is really hard to track. I'm in the tracker here because sometimes we can automatically track it but for the most part it's going to be a lot of manual work which is just what happens when you have footage like this that's so crazy shaky and blurry. On the positive side, having it so shaky like this makes it so that it will be a little bit harder to spot imperfections in our tracking job. There's that at least, but we should definitely try and do the best we can. Let's just zoom in here. I'm going to track the corner of the car, so I'm going to go up into the motion model and just set location and rotation I think would be good. And let's hold down control and click the corner of the window here and Let's begin. Going back a frame, you can see things are already pretty insane. And one more frame. This is the start of the shot. Let's just place that up there. Cool. That's a good start. I'm going to hit L so that my view is locked to the tracking marker here. And now when we scroll through the footage, holding down Alt and using the mouse wheel, you can see our view is essentially in the same spot. So that just helps to see things a little bit clearer. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next frame here. And you can see, once again, we get blurry, crazy mess here. Let's just put that as best as we can in the corner here and keep on moving. So this part is going to take a long time. Sometimes, if we get something like this, you can hit E and try and track it forward. But you can see it really quickly just loses it. And we want to be careful that we're not tracking the wrong thing here. So yeah, it's just a lot of manual matching work. <laughs> I'll speed this bit up so that it's not too ridiculously boring. So since this is sped up, you probably won't be able to see this in real time, but every once in a while we get a point where it's nice and clear, there's no motion blur, and so tracking it forward automatically actually works pretty well. You do probably want to check it just to make sure that it's actually good enough and it's not tracking the wrong points, because there is a lot of opportunity for it to track the wrong things. At some points in this shot, the point we're tracking actually goes out of the footage, and at that point I'm just kind of guessing where it's supposed to be. You can kind of line up the two edges and figure out where they're going to intersect. And it's not super important to make sure that it's exactly where it would be for those points in the shot. As close as you can guess, that's probably good enough. Especially towards the end here, this tracking point just completely goes off camera. Cool! So that's a pretty reasonable approximation of where that point is, I'd say. Nice. So. You can see throughout this footage, all these brighter yellow areas are points where I manually placed it, and then the darker yellow is where it automatically figured out where that point was. So it's not completely manual, 
but it definitely is quite a bit of work. And if we play through here, just take a look, you can see it is pretty nicely tracking to that point. I'd say this will do the trick for us. Okay, so once we've done all that, if we go up to reconstruction and go link empty to track, that will put something in our 3D scene. And if we hop back over to our 3D viewport here and take a look, you can see we've got our camera and there's an empty attached to the end of it. Let's grab this and actually hit one on the numpad to go into front view. And I'm gonna go control alt and zero to match my camera to this view. And if we hit G, we can just kind of zoom in a little bit here on the action. Let's delete our cube, we probably don't need that. And we also don't need our lamp here. What we do need is some background images. So I'm gonna select my camera once more. And if we hit zero on the numpad, we can zoom into that view and take a look at what's going on. And the camera properties here, I'm gonna go down to background images. Let's just add image. I'm gonna set it to movie clip. If we go to our folder with the image sequence and just select all of these and hit enter, we've got it playing pretty nicely in our background here now. And you can see we've got an empty that is perfectly lined up with the corner of our window. Okay, so this is when it gets interesting. I'm gonna go shift S, cursor to selected with the empty selected here. And now let's go shift A, add in a new, I'm gonna add in a sphere empty. And this will just be kind of like the rotation center of our window. If we take this spherical empty and then shift select the moving empty, I'm gonna go control P to object. And now when we play it forward, they move together. Okay, let's go in our footage to a point when we can see the whole window pretty clearly. Once again, let's go shift S, cursor to selected. And if we go shift A, I'm gonna go mesh and add in a plane. And let's just rotate this real quick by going R, X, and 90 degrees. And what I'm gonna do here is actually take the corner of this and match it up with the center of the empty by going G, shift Y, and then holding down control, and that'll just snap to that point. And let's make sure our plane here is parented to the spherical empty by going control P. And now we've got a plane that'll be our window. Let's rotate this empty a little bit so that it lines up a little bit better with our window. I'm gonna go R and Z, and you can see, just gonna move this around until it's roughly lined up with the window. If we hit R, it'll rotate from the camera's perspective. And this seems a bit more accurate here. If we just move it outwards a tiny bit, there we go. Okay, so this bottom corner here is really gonna be our baseline for how this is oriented. And if we scale down the empty, you can see we've got the window right up to the silver lip here. Okay, so with this bottom corner, I think this line is pretty much straight. And we also know that the plane is pretty much straight. So I think we could use a little bit more rotating here. If we rotate it on the local X axis by going R, X, X, then when we move it outwards here, you can see things are starting to line up a little bit better. So let's just scale up this plane once more so it's matching up with the silver lip here. And now, <laughs> now I think it'll line up a little bit better. Going into edit mode here, I'm gonna select the bottom corner and just grab that and move it on its local X axis. So G, X, X. And let's move that right into its corner here. And with these two, let's move them on the local X as well. G, X, X. Okay. I'm gonna hit G twice to move this corner on its edge here. And that, if we do it once more, will kind of match up with the corner of the window here. Let's go Control R. I'm going to right click to drop it right in the center here. And on this side, what we can do is grab it on its local X once again, G, X, X. And let's move it outwards a little ways just to match up with the bowing of the window and we'll bevel that to make it look a little bit nicer later. But right now, we can also grab this side, go G, X, X twice, and let's maybe double tap G so that it matches up with this bevel here. Once again, G, X, X, and I'm gonna overshoot it a little bit because it'll soften up when we bevel it. Okay, that's looking pretty good there. Let's add in a loop cut along the vertical axis here. And for this, what I'm gonna do is hit G twice. Now it'll pop and slide on this axis, but what I'm gonna do is hit C, so it extends in the opposite direction to kind of extrapolate it. 
And now we can move up to the frame along the top here. And if we overshoot that once again, it'll line up a little bit better when we bevel it. Okay, so I'm gonna Alt Shift select this loop here, and I'm gonna go Control B, that'll bevel it, and we can scroll up to add in a little bit more resolution there. And let's do the same with the axis going across here. Control B, here we go. And it's a little bit of a balance to figure out how this is gonna work for us. I would say on this side, the bevel is a little bit tighter. And then over here, it's a little bit looser. So what we can do is just grab these and kind of slide them up just to make it fit a little bit better. And then we can match these ones in the middle up to make it a little bit more of a smooth transition. Okay, we've got a pretty nice smooth edge flow going here. And I think our plane is matching up with the window pretty nicely. And I think this is a pretty good approximation of what we want to replace. So let's get on with it here. We're going to want to make this rig a little bit more advanced here now. I'm going to go Shift A. Once again, our 3D cursor is right in the center of these empties. And we're going to add in a lattice. Now with the copy attributes add-on enabled, what I'm going to do is with the lattice selected, I'm going to Shift select our spherical empty here. And things are getting a little crazy but I'm going to go control C and copy rotation. And now our lattice is matching up perfectly with our window. And now what I'm going to do is hit G and shift Y twice. Now it'll move on every axis except for the local Y axis. And we can kind of plunk it down here in the center. Let's scale it up a bit. Make sure we're enveloping the mesh perfectly. Okay, so let's update the rig system here a little bit. I'm going to select the lattice object, shift select our empty here, and go control P to object. And now if we select the window object, I'm going to go alt P, which will unparent it. But if we go keep transformation, it'll stay in the same position. And now let's shift select the lattice object, go control P, and lattice deform. Cool. So now when we go into edit mode on our lattice, let's select these vertices over here this warps and shapes the window object, which will be really helpful for us. While we're in edit mode here, let's go control H with these two verts selected and hook to new object. And we can do that with the other corners too. And these are just dropping in new empties that we can use to control the lattice. And it's getting a little bit crazy here, but if we take all of these empties, select them, and once again, parent them to our spherical empty here, by going control P. Now we've got a pretty versatile system where the spherical empty follows the location empty, which is tracked to the corner of our window. And we can rotate and scale the whole thing with a spherical empty, but we can deform the window by moving these empties. While we're at it, let's also throw on a simple subdivision surface to the window. Here we go, switch that to simple. And if we grab that modifier and throw it over top of the lattice modifier, it'll have a little bit more mesh to work with, so it'll deform a little bit smoother. Okay, it'd probably be a good idea to save the file here. So, now we have the job of actually making this match up throughout the whole footage, which with this pretty flexible rig shouldn't be too terribly difficult. Let's make sure we mark this frame 68. I'm going to hit M here with my mouse over the timeline so we know how to get back. And if we just pan through the footage here, you could see that our window is not really sticking that well right now. For one frame, it looks real good, but we're going to have to do some adjustments for all the other frames. So what I'm going to do here is enable automatic keyframes, and I'm going to select our spherical empty here. I'm going to hit G and execute that with the left mouse button. That way it adds in a keyframe. And now the name of the game is just to pan through the rest of the footage scale this whichever way makes it match up to the window better and then we're also going to be rotating it a little bit just so that matches up as well we can start by setting keyframes pretty far apart and then later we can go back in between the keyframes and match those up a little bit better let's just scale this here making it look good so the main two things we want to focus on right now is the scale and the basic rotation of the window, and we'll match up the more complex points a little bit later, because you can see 
This is not the shape of the window anymore, even if we rotate it and scale it, it's not quite matching up. And that's what our extra empties that we added in earlier are going to help us fix. Okay, we're at the start here, just filling that in. If we take a look here, you can see it's starting to look maybe like it might belong there. Once we get into these clearer close-ups, we want to make sure we're doing a pretty good job here. Okay, this part is interesting. When it goes through the window, we probably want to rotate it a little bit so it matches up here, but we also eventually want the camera to completely go through the window. So let's rotate it a little bit like this. I'm just double tapping R to get this kind of trackball effect. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it, guessing where the actual window would be, and rotating it to be like that. And panning through the footage here, by this point, we're inside the card, so I'm going to rotate it all the way so it pops through the camera. And if we go into wireframe, we can see the edge a little bit better. Let's fix that up. There we go. So the camera goes right through. I'm not a huge fan of the way this sharp edge is turning out, so let's bevel that a little bit more. We can scroll up to add in some more resolution, and it's not a perfect bevel here, but that'll definitely help to soften it out at least. So at this point, we've got some rough keyframes in, and it's roughly the right size, but it's still not quite exactly what we want. So now is when we go in between these keyframes and just make sure they're matching up a little bit better. You can see the scale and rotation's a bit off here. So let's rotate it up a little bit and scale it up a little bit. Okay, I would say this end part here is looking pretty good, but this point is a little bit messed up. So let's take this opportunity to start on using the Warpy Boys, which I am calling these empties here. And hey, let's make this a little bit more organized. I'm gonna select the lattice object and the location empty. And let's just move those to a different collection real quick. I'm just calling it rig because that's kind of what it is, but also we don't really need to see those because they're not control points that we're gonna use. Okay, cool. So let's just go crazy with keyframes here. I'm going to find a corner and I'm going to grab it and move it to where it's supposed to be. And I'm just going to do that throughout the whole footage. Oops. Let's start on the frame that has the marker so that I don't accidentally mess everything up. Once again, I'm just starting with keyframes that are not very dense and then we'll fill in the in-between points later. And with those all set up nicely, let's just do the in-between frames and fill it in. Okay, I think that corner is pretty accurately lined up. Now it's just time to readjust the other corners. And we probably don't want to get too complex on this shot. So what I'm going to do for these first few frames is I'm going to go here to where the window is pretty much completely in view. And let's line this up correctly, or at least as correctly as we can get. It's a little bit hard to see still, but I think that is pretty accurate. And let's go to the first frame here. And let's just grab these two and just warp them like crazy so that it's a really tiny window at the start here. That way it doesn't look like it's over top of the barn. And this is kind of a dirty little trick here, but 
Should work for the first frame at least. There we go. It just unstretches and it's lining back up again nicely. Okay. Let's actually start on this frame here and make sure that things are lined up like they are supposed to be. There we go. That's lining back up. Cool. It's these really clear frames when you can see everything that you really want to have it lined up correctly. And once again, let's just focus on this bottom corner here and just make sure that we spread out some keyframes and get it lining up. Okay, so, so far this has just been a ridiculous amount of manual adjustment, and that's really kind of the name of the game when you get something that's this crazy to track. So, I think it's starting to work out pretty well. I've gotten most of the corners down, and now I'm just going to work on this top corner. All right, so here is our final result. It's looking pretty good. There are some points where it doesn't look like it tracks quite perfectly, but the camera is so shaky that nobody will be able to tell. And we're gonna be adding in some motion blur later. So definitely check in next week for the tutorial on the lighting and shading and rendering, all that good stuff. But hey, I'd say this is looking pretty good. If you're interested in learning more about visual effects in Blender, I've created a completely free video for you. And in this video, I go over five different techniques that'll help you to seamlessly integrate your digital objects into real life footage. So if that sounds interesting to you, definitely go ahead and pick up a copy. There's a link in the description. And with all that aside, I'd say we're pretty much done here. I hope you have an excellent day and cheers.